WLNC News, reporting live from Woodlake Nature Center to talk about the invasive species buckthorn. Today I have naturalist Amy and Ron here to talk with us about this species. Amy, what is buckthorn? Uh, thanks Shannon for being here. Buckthorn is a highly invasive plant that was brought to North America in the 1800s from Europe. And it can starts off growing really small and typically grows quick into a medium-sized shrub and sometimes even into a small tree. Okay, how did it get here from Europe? Uh, great question. People brought it over from Europe. Um, it's native over there. They brought it over here often to grow it into a hedgerow or a fence around their farms. The berry also acts as a diuretic, so it could have had a medicinal purpose as well. Um, and it just kind of took off from there. We find it in almost every county in Minnesota now. Right, buckthorn is an invasive species. So what is an invasive species? Yeah, an invasive species can be a plant, an animal, an insect. It's, it's anything that's brought to an area that historically wasn't found there. It's, it's not native to that area. And oftentimes, they get very competitive with the native species, often kind of bullying them out of their, their home turf. So, how does it affect the forest then? Yeah, it affects the forest in a, a large way. Um, what happens is the berries which are found on the buckthorn plants get eaten by quite a few bird species. And when they go to the bathroom, the seed that was in that berry comes out and wherever, you know, there's scat lands, it basically fertilizes um, that seed to grow into a new plant. They start off small, but very, very quickly they grow into a small shrub. And what happens is the roots take hold and they are lelopathic, which means they're giving off a chemical to inhibit other species from growing. So we're not seeing our native flowers, grasses, and shrubs starting to grow. Even young trees that we're trying to grow can get shaded and competed out of a place to grow by buckthorn. Um, and as it starts growing, what you'll start to see is a whole understory that's completely buckthorn. It becomes a monoculture, just one species taking over. A healthy forest should really have three different three layers to it. The ground layer, which will be your wildflowers, um, grasses, a healthy shrub layer, which would be a diversity of native shrubs, and then a canopy layer, which would be your taller trees. Um, a forest that's being taken over by buckthorn, you typically only have your canopy layer and then a shrub layer of buckthorn. And it's not a great plant to have either because it, it doesn't have a high value to wildlife. The leaves are not eaten by many species and it doesn't provide great habitat. So uh, the forest turns into a place that's not highly suitable for a lot of animals. species of buckthorn at Woodlake Nature Center and two in, in Minnesota. We have both the European or common buckthorn and we also have glossy buckthorn. Um, they're pretty similar. Uh, there's a few things that set them apart. Both are invasive and need to be pulled. This is the European or common buckthorn and both of them have kind of an oval shaped leaf that has veins that run down the length of the leaf and they have tiny little tooth edges You'll look for a dark purple or black berry on both. With the European or common buckthorn, the berries tend to be in clusters around the plant. And with the glossy buckthorn, they're more spread out over the whole plant. And both of them have a grayish colored bark. And probably one of the most distinguishing characteristics is actually on the European or common buckthorn, You'll see small branches kind of scattered throughout the plant that do have a sharp thorn on the end, hence the name buckthorn. The other thing to look for if you're curious
curious which one of the two species you have is the common or European have opposite branches growing directly across from each other. The glossy is going to have alternate branching. Best thing to do is not have it in your in your yard at all. But in the event you do, then you need to come up with a uh, way to remove it. <clears throat> it depends on the size. If it, for instance, I'm just going to set this tool down here for a second. If, it, if it's a small plant, similar to what Amy was stepping on here, you can simply kneel down and, and extract it by just pulling it out at the roots shake the, the soil off and then you can simply discard that and it'll eventually decompose. If it is a larger one like this, you want to put the jaws around the base of the trunk and then it, with the fulcrum part here, just pull on the lever and it'll uproot the plant. And then simply, again, lift up your legs, shake the dirt out. Now, this plant is probably about seven feet tall. It has a fairly extensive root system, so that's why you sometimes need help to extract that root system out of there. Then you can simply set that down. And all these, you want to make sure that you re-put the soil back, like replacing a divot on a fairway. Just replace the soil and pack it back down. If it is a larger tree, a larger bush, you're going to want to cut that with a saw. Again, once you have cut it, you want to treat it within about 24 hours with a herbicide to make sure or cover it with uh, plastic to ensure that it does not regrow back the following spring. If you're unsure as to what herbicide you need to use for that particular species, you can ask us here at Wood Lake or your local gardener or home center. And again, it's replant the soil and please be safe and live properly when you're doing it to avoid injury to yourself. Thanks so much, Ron and Amy, for helping us identify and learn how to treat buckthorn today. If you have any more questions about buckthorn, please contact Wood Lake Nature Center. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks.